Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to review probably one of the most, if not the most frugal brand of alcohol markers that are on the market today, the Ohuhu. And I have reviewed the Ohuhu markers before. When they first came out, they used to use the kind of touch new style body. And then um, I did a comparison when they came out with their new style, which is what they're still using. And then I reviewed their brush markers. And then I did a video on how I make my, my marker swatches and how I uh, find color families. And I will link to that because that's a pretty um, a pretty good video. No matter what brand of marker you use, I think it's pretty helpful as far as getting good blends and putting your colors together in a way that you can get the most use out of them and get the best results. So I will link that down below. So this is not going to be like a full in-depth review. It's going to be more of kind of an add-on or a, um, a comparison to what the previous sets had in them and then what this new set has. So um, prior to this, I had the 120 set of Uhuhu markers and that set comprises um, from here back. So it's got a pretty good range of more vibrant colors. It does have some really pale uh, flesh tones as well as some darker flesh tones, earth tones in here. But as they've expanded, now I don't have the 160 set, so I'm not sure which ones of in here are in the 160 set, but the, all that information is on the Ohuhu website if you want to look from set to set to set. I think they go, they start at 40 um, markers in a set, then it's 80, then it's 100, 120, 160, and 200. So you can kind of see um, each set builds onto the next one. So every color that would be in the 40 set would be in the um, 80 set. And every color in the 80 set would be in the 100 set, you know, and so on and so forth. So you probably would want to look at those and see what you absolutely need and get the biggest or get the smallest set that's going to it's going to encompass all of those so you don't end up starting with the 40 set and then deciding, oh, I love these. I'm going to go buy the, you know, 80 set because then you'd get 40 duplicates. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Then again, starting with a small set and seeing if you really like them and using them up and then deciding is a good idea too. It's up to you. These are going to run about 50 cents a marker no matter what size set you get. So there's no financial advantage into buying the bigger set versus a smaller set like Oftentimes, the larger the set, the small, the lower per marker price there is. But that's not a that's not a thing here. It's the same, um, no matter what size you're getting. So that's kind of nice. So it kind of um, eliminates that consideration as far as whether to go big or not. You know, it's not like you're saving money per marker by going large. It's just if you want that extra range. Some people will and some people won't. So um, that's what I'm kind of here to explain. I do want to let you know that I do have a relationship with this company. They're a client of mine and I'm paid to write uh, some of their blog articles and design some projects for their website. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. And these markers were sent to me for that purpose. So um, I did not pay for these out of pocket. They're part of, of my um, what I what I do as far as a freelance illustrator for them. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, the 120 set had the colors from this black on back, and then it also contained the cool grays, which start here, and the warm grays and the fluorescence. So the 120 set is pretty uh, robust. The 200 set also includes a lot of earth tones. It can includes um, tones that would be good for wildlife, skin, hair. It also has a really nice selection of lavenders and plums, which you don't see in many marker lines. Even Copic has a pretty small set of violets. So I was very pleased to see this. I've purchased packs of purple markers in the past. I've um, got the Spectrum Noir, uh, Art and Fly, um, a few different sets of purples and still I found that they just didn't get light enough and I was just doing some blending here and yeah I was able to get really nice purple blends. Purple's kind of a tricky color to blend. Purples and reds I find them those ink colors just want to grab the paper and I'll show you how I blended that in a minute. Um, I'll have to grab my markers out. But uh, yeah, the really nice pale set of lavender is really helpful and then you've got such a variety of really um, um, fair skin tones, browns, reds, just really, really pale muted shades that I think would be very handy. As well as these uh, warm grays, yellow grays, blue grays, green grays. So if you were lacking a color, you could do your underpainting with the grays and then glaze over it with some of the other tones to get what you want. So I feel like as far as layering and mixing, it's a pretty robust set. Um, 
I, they had a lot of like kind of paler pinks previously. I wouldn't mind some lighter blues to be honest, but they do have the really light blue grays. So blue gray one and blue gray three, I think those could be used to um, like if you if you primed everything in a blue gray one and then you did your blending with your other grays um, and then blended it back, blended black over it with the uh, blue gray one, I think you could get a really, really pale blue blend if you wanted to. I think that a lot of markers companies don't include very many light shades, especially the budget brands, because they contain such a high percentage of alcohol when you're in those lighter colors that they tend to dry out quicker than the more vibrant colors. And if they're shipping their product to Amazon and it's sitting in the warehouse for who knows how long before it sells, there's a chance that there's going to be some, um, some evaporating and some dry markers. And I'm sure it's a headache that a lot of companies don't want to deal with. Uh, Ohuhu stuff I think sells pretty briskly. So there's probably less of a worry about that. Now the color numbering system they use is uh, the same as like the the Touch New, the, Schwin, the Shinhan Twin Touch um, concept by Jerry's Autorama. So if you wanted to get a reinker, Ohuhu doesn't sell reinkers, but if you want to get a reinker, you should be able to get them from the Shinhan Twin Touch line if you can find somebody that stocks them. So if there's a color you absolutely love, you could reink it that way. These are designed to be disposable markers. So, you know, they're not really designed to be refilled, but the tips are really good and you could definitely get a few refills before you'd have any sort of tip fraying. So this is what the new case looks like. And one thing that makes it different is there's actually a sleeve in here and it's a, it's a divided insert. So it keeps your markers from falling out. So if you have a bunch of markers out because you're doing a, you know, a blending project or you're, you're working on something and you have a bunch of different markers on your table, you don't have to worry about them falling over and getting buried and then you can't see your markers and find what you want. So that's kind of nice. You've got that, um, you've got that option. And I just think it's, a uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice to have that. And I can keep my colors kind of coordinated. I can keep purples together and pinks together. I can keep earth tones together, grays together. And I just didn't have that, um, with the other bags, the other bags that are kind of like open and they could kind of tip over if you have half of them out. So that's a nice new improvement. There's also a plastic, uh, like kind of a soft vinyl plastic sheet that comes in that's right here in this. You've got this kind of like layer where you can put other things like your swatches and whatnot. There's some test cards that came with it. Um, that plastic is for putting between your sketchbook pages or on your table so you don't get marker bleeding through. And uh, let's see what else. I'm just getting my colors over there for blending because I put them back after this because I thought I was done. I had recorded the other one, but then I got tongue tied at the end. I was like, oh shoot, I got to do that again. Um, so blending is really good with these. I blended these for some projects. Actually, this is going up on the Ohuhu blog shortly. A couple little Valentine's treats here and here and they're just it's they just blend really well I like these classic markers I prefer the classics to the brush markers myself I know it's not a very popular opinion but I think value wise 50 cents a marker versus a buck a marker and durability of the tips even though the um their brush marker which I'll show you here even though the brush marker the tip is reversible so if it does fray you can flip it around um I just I just prefer the chisel and the bullet and the Ohuhu line myself. Um, it's, it's a personal preference thing. Um, I like the value of it and I, I'd rather have more colors. If I had so much money to spend, I'd rather have more colors than have the fancier nib. You know, as long as the nib I have, I have are adequate. So there you have it. These are uh, the stamps I use to do my swatches are from Waffle Flower. I'll show you those real quick because everyone always asks. So those are the ones I use for my big swatch card, like I did here, like that. I didn't have room to use those stamps for my uh, my 200 set because they wouldn't fit. Even though I was using a bigger piece of paper, it still was not big enough. And then when I'm doing my um, my flip through, my swatch cards with the holes in it, and I have a video on how I do that and how I choose colors to go together, I will link that down below so you can make the most of your markers. Um, I, use, I use those for that and those for my little color recipe things. So they're kind of fun to do. It's fun to practice because the more you practice with your blending, the better you're going to get. Let's do a quick blending practice and um, I'll show you how I go about it, especially if I have a tricky color, because there's a couple different ways I do it. If I'm doing something like a browns or greens, something that blends easily, um, I skip the first step 
but I think it's real important for you to see how I do it. So the first thing that I would recommend doing is putting your markers in order. Um, so 168 is my latest color. I've got that first. Then um, 169 is my next darkest. Then 171 is my next. And then 83 is my next. And that was from the previous sets there. And what I'm going to do is start off. Hopefully that doesn't fall on us. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, I'm going to start off with my lightest color. Now, if I was doing uh, greens, I would just start off with my darkest color. And I'll explain what I mean about that in a second. So on the markers, you've got a band on your fine tip end and you've got a chisel. You've got no band on your chisel tip end and you want to start with your chisel tip. And that's one thing I see beginners not doing is they forget they have a chisel tip and they just they avoid it like the plague. I don't know why. But maybe because it's big, a lot of beginners do not want to bother with that chisel end. And if you just have a bullet end and a chisel end, you really want to use that chisel end because that is going to help you. So that I put my, I prime it. I prime it with my lightest color. I put enough in there so you can kind of see it on the back. And then I'll go into my darkest color. Again, I'm going to go with the chisel end because I want to put lots of ink in there. The chisel end delivers more ink and that's gonna make it blend easier. That's why your brush markers blend so easily is because they have more ink. Then I'm gonna go with my next darkest color. So if I was using greens, I would just start in with my darkest color just like I did with that dark purple and I wouldn't prime it underneath. But anytime you've got a color that's a little trickier to blend, like a purple or a red, I like to prime it. Or if you're just um, new and you need a little more time to work, priming it's a great idea. Then I'm going in with this next to the lightest, coloring over the where they meet up. And then I'm going to go in with my lightest and just go over that edge. Now you can work back further. If you're not getting the blend you want, you could go back up further over the previous layers with that chisel edge and you can blend. And um, that chisel edge is a little bit tougher, so you're not going to hurt it. If you're doing that with a bullet tip, it might harm it, so you don't want to do that. Now this is saturated. Look at all that color on the back side. So then if I decide I wanted that, that purple a little bit darker, now I would go in with a bullet end because I've got a really nice base of color there. I can go in here with that bullet end. I can go in and add a little bit more color where I want it darkest. And a lot of times you don't even need to blend that in. I mean, that transition's pretty good. But if you're if you decide eh, I would like to blend that in a little bit more, it's not quite the way I want. So then I take the next color, just color over the edge where they overlap, and I would bring the next color down, and then so on and so forth. But this time using the bullet tip, so I'm not flooding it. You don't want to flood it because then you'll be going outside of your lines, especially if you're working on like a, a small stamp design, which I know a lot of my viewers are stampers. You want to go with a bullet because you're not going to be putting down that much ink. And then just kind of go over the edge with that lightest color. And then you've got a really nice blend. And when it dries, you're going to see it's the it lines up a little bit and you've got a little bit lighter of a look there. Um, so there's that. Now I could pick three colors. We could do like a color that blends easily just so I can show you the difference. Let's just pick together here. Uh, let me see. We could do... 47, 48, 59 is a little bit, what's a, we could do 47, 81, and 59. I think that would work pretty good. Let's see, 47, what did I say, 47, 81, and 59, I think that's what I said. Uh, 51. Oh my gosh, I should have, uh, I should have pulled those colors previously. I can never see them when I need a 51. And let me look at that one. No, that wasn't, that's not the color I wanted. 47, 81, 81, and 59. Jeez Louise. 59. And you can see the caps match pretty good. The caps on these match really good compared to the um, compared to some of the other brands, which is really nice. I'm really appreciative of that. And 181. Okay. So we have got our dark, medium, and light. So if I've got a color that I know is not that difficult to blend, what I'll do is I'll just start off with my darkest color. 
And the numbering system, like the numbers don't seem to matter. Like it's not like they go in order or anything. So keep that in mind. Again, I am starting off with this chisel edge to make sure I can put plenty of color down. Then I'm going to go in with the next color, but I'm going to color over the entire darker color to force that blend. And this is good if you have to like jump a couple colors, bring that down a little bit, and then go in with my lightest color. And it looks pretty solid right now. So let's go back in with our darker color. Let's do the bullet end. I'm not being very neat here. Maybe these colors are a little too close. I'm not seeing a huge difference. Now you can just start to see it. You can flick a little bit like you would with a um, with a brush tip just by loose, like using a less pressure as you lift up. I could even go with a darker color if I wanted to. Let me just see what would go darker. I could do 46 is a little bit darker, or 43 is quite a bit darker. I could try 43. Well, it's quite a bit darker, but let's just see. Now my ink is still wet, so I shouldn't have any problem going in, but I am going in with a bullet tip just so I don't overdo it and flood. I do have some outside of my lines because I wasn't terribly careful. So I got that darker color in. Then I'm just going to work back, just like we did on the purple. And kind of blend that back out. That was quite a jump. But it's working. It's blending in. I don't have any qualms with uh, the blendability of these. I think they are an excellent choice for a first marker. And they do have a brush tip version available if that's absolutely what you want. Uh, they are easier to learn with. I will tell you that brush tip markers are easier to learn with, but it just depends on what you're after. And I could show you here, I'll show you an example of blending with a brush tip marker since I've got these right out. Let's see, we could do, we could do G2, GY3, and GY1. I think that would work. G2, GY3, GY1. And we could do that the same way because um, because greens blend pretty easily for whatever reason. And we'll use the brush tip here. And see, when I'm doing this, I'll actually press a little bit more at the, um, where I want it darker and just kind of lift up as I go. And that just kind of gives me a, uh, a nice soft blend. Now I will do the same thing. Now these have a, have a band at the, at the brush end. And I'm just gonna, I would just layer right over it just like that. Make sure I, that line disappears. And then we'll do GOI1. And I actually can go up from this side if I want. I mean, yeah, the brush tips are, are easier. <laughs> but it just depends on what you're, you know, what you're after. You can go back in and you can darken some areas. Build it up as much as you like. But I mean, part of the reason is because of the flexibility. It just allows you to control what's coming out of your brush a little bit more. But if you're willing to put the practice in, you definitely can do that with a bullet chisel tip combination. But you gotta use that chisel tip. That chisel tip is so important if you are working with just a bullet and a chisel. If you have brush, mark, brush tip markers, you might only use the brush. You may never even touch that chisel, chisel tip. So yeah, okay, it's a little easier to blend with the brush tip ones, but um, I, I really love the classic style. Maybe it's because I'm old fashioned and I started working with a bullet and a chisel marker uh, when I started working with markers, like, I don't know, 15 years ago. Um, I don't work with them all the time, but, um, but they're fun and I like them and there you have it. So yes, they've expanded the range in the 200 set, getting a lot of really pale colors, especially good pale purples and good pale plum, violet tones, lots of uh, skin tones, lots of earth tones, great for wildlife, um, portraiture. 
there's still a lot of uh well luckily there's all these grays because i was going to say eh, they're still very orange kind of like the um the ohuhu skin tone marker which i felt was a little too orange um but you've got these warm grays that you can use to tone down some of those colors so i think it's a really great robust set if you want the bullet chisel combination and if you don't then i would recommend their brush tip ones just keep in mind they are a fiber tip so they will eventually fray so when that happens you can pull that tip out and put it back in backwards and you'll have a fresh tip and that will definitely outlast the ink that's in the middle both of these are technically um, disposable, non-refillable markers, uh, but if you've got the classic style, the oval barrel with the bullet and the chisel end, you can get the Shinhan Twin Touch ink to refill, or you could do what I do, which is a lot of times just mix up a custom shade from the alcohol ink that I have on hand, but I had, I do have a fairly large amount of that because I do have um, alcohol inks that I use for other crafts, so uh, if you don't have that, you could order a order a close um, a close ink color. Another thing you can do if you have a smartphone is you can download the Copic app. It's free and you can look at, they have hand colored swatches there. So you might be able to eyeball it and figure out what color of Copic ink you could order to refill a marker. And that goes for uh, obviously any brand of alcohol marker. And that could help. I mean, uh, reproduction on a screen is not going to be as good as your paper swatch, but it could definitely get you by in a pinch. And even if you have to mix it with a little bit of, um, blending solution to lighten it or something um you could you could get by pretty well i think i'm not you know got to get the job done sometimes well that did blend really well didn't it uh <laughs> so that's all i have for today did i show you these i think i did see i've recorded this three times so i don't know what i've shown you or not because i keep forgetting those will be on the ohuhu website um and i will have little videos on these valentines on my um my youtube channel try to put links to everything down below so you can find these markers so you can find my video where I show you how to make these fancy swatches that will be game changers no matter what kind of marker you have and um, did I show you my little blending recipes I don't know if I did I think I, I did at one of these videos did I show you them this time I don't know but um but yeah practice practice with your colors and see what works well for you and write them down so if you get a if you get a blend you really love write down those numbers just kind of draw a circle swatch them out write down the numbers and then you'll always have that keep that in that little spot in your bag if you have this one where you've got the um where you've got the this little kind of insert we have the slot in back here great place to keep your swatches keep the things that you need when you're marker coloring and then you'll always have them and you'll always be picking the right color marker because you'll know exactly what you have uh, I think that's it. I think I've gone over everything. <laughs> and if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. I really enjoy these markers and I think they're a great, um, a great budget option. I mean, they're a great option anyway, but especially if you're looking to get into markers on a budget, these are a great, um, a great choice. Just keep in mind, no matter what brand of marker you go with, no matter if they're the fanciest, most expensive Copic markers or they are um, office supply store markers, whatever you go with, it's going to take practice. It has probably the steepest learning curve from any material that I've used. Brush markers, it's kind of like you have a scale of 1 to 10 of how hard it is to learn this this art supply. Um, so if you've got the bullet and the chisel markers, you're starting out on a 1. If you've got a brush tip marker, you're starting out on a 4. So it does make it a little bit easier using brush tip markers. But you're paying more, and if you're on a budget and you've only got so much to spend, that means you'll have fewer markers to work with. And having um, markers close enough that you can blend is really important. Um, that said, the 72 set of the brush tip markers from Uhuhu are pretty good. You do get some nice skin tones in there. Um, you know, it's not bad. Personally, I'd rather have more markers for the price and have a chisel and bullet tip, but that's just me. So personal choice, personal preference, you do you, and uh, and I'll do me, and we'll all be happy, won't we now? <laughs> that's all for today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, and until next time, happy crafting!